Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I'm here today to talk a little about beasts in human form. I've talked about it in the past but never so succinctly and I'm hoping this will do the trick this time and wrap everything up. To illustrate, I have the great red dragon and the woman clothed with the sun which I'll discuss briefly at, at the end of this video. Now I'm reading it for you. Here is a gruesome topic. This is what I have found out about one sort of unusual being on earth. These beings are cunning, deceptive, and appallingly cruel. This video is definitively not about my family or friends. It has to do with some beasts in human form that I encountered in the cults that kill that I wrote about in the year 2018 or thereabouts. Luckily, I live to tell the tale. And so, I hope May you, roaming the earth and intermixing with us as if they were human, are beasts in human form. These must be treated as if they were wild animals so as to prevent fatal injury to ourselves. If they can be captured, then they must be locked up in solitary confinement for the criminally insane. These unusual beasts that talk have, through some fluke of incarnation, attained human form, but they are not individuated human beings. They have a group soul that they share with other beasts in human form. The group soul of these beings exerts a tremendous mind control and black magic influence over normal human beings. Normal human beings have individual souls. When they are attacked by one of the beasts in human form, the force of the beast's group soul will destroy the sanity and then destroy the life of the normal person. The only ray of hope for the man or woman under attack is this. They must unite their will, their heart, and their mind with the great will, the great heart, and the great mind of God. This is the practice of Advaita of oneness with God. If a person is able to practice Advaita, then he or she will find that the force of God's will dispels the evil onslaught of the group soul of the beasts in human form. Even from a great physical distance, Beasts in human form are drawn to attack saints because they are attracted to the light that shines forth from the saints' souls. The only way for the saint to stay alive is for him or her to pass the final test of sainthood. That is the act of Advaita described above. Well. That's the story, and now back to the image by William Blake. The great red dragon and the woman clothed with the sun. You see the great red dragon is hovering in the air over the woman clothed with the sun. And uh, the Bible passage is Revelation 12, verses 3 to 4, and it goes like this. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns 
and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. My comment on this image is, this painting is a good illustration of the attack of the group soul of the beasts in human form, because they often attack through mind control from above, as it were. See how it's hovering above the woman? As if they were hovering in the air. That is a danger to the sanity of a person because they're near your mind. In addition, as is well known, they may attack in physical form. That is a danger that will most likely cost a person his or her life. In order for them to attack in physical form, it goes without saying they have to be very close to us. So if we sense something odd is in the air and we have a an odd premonition about a particular person, I think it's a good idea just to distance ourselves from them physically. Walk away or drive away or get away. In some way, distance ourselves from them to prevent the type of danger that they might cause us. You know, this passage in Revelation 12, it, there's a story behind it. This woman is pregnant and the dragon swoops down and the dragon wants to devour the woman's child. And what that means to me is that these beasts in human form, they are inimical, that means the enemies of uh, continuing life in uh, human society. That is because the beast attempts to devour the children of humankind. The, the beast, if it could, would end human life on earth because there'd be no more children, you see. So the beast is, it looks like a human being, but it has powers far beyond those of human beings in terms of the psychic realm, in terms of the astral airs and so forth, in terms of what I call psychic powers. In my website, Awakening with Planet Earth, https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com. You can go there and search up the topic psychic powers and find out the type of thing to look out for because we Christians, we don't want psychic powers uh, hanging out in our neighborhood. Sometimes we're gifted with ascension gifts, but, but we don't go for power over other people, you know. We believe in expressing our hearts and following our hearts and serving humankind. Yeah, so we have to look out for the powers of the air. We have to look out for power over. We have to look out for the beings that are trying to destroy humankind because they're not human beings, even though they may look like it. Yeah. You might be wondering where I got this information. Uh, actually, I ran into these beings in my own experience in the world, and then I did a ton of reading trying to explain what it was that I was confronting in the way of unusual beings on earth and what I read didn't precisely agree with what I finally figured out which is what I presented here but there are references to these types of beings in the esoteric lore in the esoteric literature in case you want to take a look and uh, my own ideas about them evolved over the years so uh, you'll find different hypotheses on my website that attempt to explain this this awful phenomenon and the one that you have right now is most likely to wrap the very last one i hope well that's all for now god bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days in love light and joy this is alice b claggett i am of the stars and you are too see you next time mm -hmm.